Thanks, on all State family. Welcome to another research rally. It's Wednesday. It's 4 p.m. And we are librarians, and this is what we do. We do research. I'm Nicole from the library. And as per usual, joined by the amazing, the incomparable. That's me. Oh, that's you. Oh, there you go. Take it. Library that's Ross. Ross. I'm Jason. There yeah. we go. Okay, we got it. And today we are researching or asking a question. We might need to work on this question because usually that's a big part of research, right? We come to the library with a question. The librarians are like, wait a minute, hold on. Let's talk about that question. Is castor oil a miracle cure? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we're doing? We're doing that one? Okay. I'm doing a paper on today. Is castor oil a miracle cure? So. Okay, so that's our that's our prompt. That's our topic. First, we have to kind of think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Castor oil is is what a is miracle. It? Ah, there's sure. a lot of things to there's a lot yeah. of things to take away from that. So first, where's our first problem, Jason? What are you kind of like thinking? Ah, uh, wait a minute. Well, if it was a cure, a cure for what? And okay. a miracle. I don't know that I would probably eliminate. Now, this would be mine if I was doing mine. I don't know. Is castor oil a, a cure and a cure for what? Are we looking at a particular ailment? Like, what is it? So, again, I, well, all I've done is I've heard this prompt. And as a librarian, I'm kind of like dissecting and slashing and cutting prices low, low, low. Um, but again, and the miracle stands out to me. And then a cure for what? And then who would take castor oil? What is castor oil? Where does the castor oil come from? Do I get it from a doctor? Uh, this is yeah, where my, Ross, my head's going. Ross was like, he even put on his little thing thing. He's like, what is a caster? So I think. Yeah, I, in my head, I thought a caster was like a nut or I don't, I, I honestly have no idea what a caster is. Okay. So let's start there. So as librarians at Seminole State College of Florida, um, usually we, uh, of course, are going to try to get you into the databases and we usually end up in the library secure subscription databases that are accessible only by logging in with your institutional login. But I mean, literally, Ross, if, if we are asking what is Castor, we should probably start somewhere more simple. Well, yeah, my first thought would be like, we probably want to go somewhere that's going to define what Castor oil is. Okay. Um, I mean, I was thinking we could even go just to the World Wide Web. We could, yeah. I mean, that, that I mean that's instinctively, that's probably what I would do. Okay, and just, so you know, we can talk about that. Hi, Audrey. You didn't even ask, what is castor oil? Because I, I, I don't even know how to start searching this. Well, you could see, students, we kind of have three to, and Nicole, did you give your approach? Because my approach was different than Ross's. What was I mean, yours? I didn't know what castor oil, which now I'm doubting. I kind of don't. I know it was like a seed with a husk. I probably would just go to Google because I'm going to get something super basic right off the bat. A place to start. The database can be kind of scary. It might not be the right word. Not scary. So I, I just learned that castors are a bean. Oh, they're a bean. I, I did not know that. Um, okay. And I can see, yeah, they, they're... Okay, so fatty acids, same as coconut oil, castor oil. Again, I'm going back to the words that were in the prompt that I was delivered as a librarian, miracle and cure. Mm -hmm. If it says yeah. common, common health conditions and natural, I'm getting away a little bit from miracle because yeah, it's okay. common. And I'm Again, this is, this is our, you're peeking into our brains here. Yeah. This is our subjective. This is nobody's right, America. nobody's wrong. We're looking at the science. Mm. Yes, research as Ex strategic exploration. This yep. is what we coach as librarians. We have different yep. approaches. We're talking about different things. We're coming into it from a nebulous zone all over the place. This is normal. This is normal, people. We're narrating what we do. Yep. Okay. And I'm looking at dot coms. We got dot govs. We kind of need to pay attention to some of that stuff. Um, as we know, with a lot of medical things, like people can purport or allege that something is a miracle or is a cure for something, and there may be is no scientific data to back that up or if there is, there is are they presenting that scientific data to us these are questions we should start asking mm -hmm. yeah I, as, uh, oh, i'm just scrolling through here and like I, i'm pretty encouraged since we are talking about you know cure health kind of stuff I'm, I'm encouraged that i'm seeing something from the national institutes of health there right okay they have a lot of credibility um, I, I don't know exactly what this is going to be, but I'm kind of hoping it's going to be something very like straightforward, 
so I can understand Library of Medicine. Is. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you scroll up, Roz, let, let's uh, go with NCBI. So this is the so it's the National Center for Biology, uh, Biotechnology Information. Excuse me. And then this is a .gov, and this is the Library of Medicine. Not only the Library of Medicine, but the national one. And so this is a reputable uh, source. So what do you got, Ross? So you got some background stuff here, like what castor oil is, what it's used for, that kind of stuff here. You can actually see, like in very scientific terms, um, okay. what mm -hmm. it's, what it, how it's made, and what it's used. Or, and students, as you're looking, you see those numbers there. That's that's going to be similar to like a Wikipedia. You may have seen those numbers before, but those are actually in-text citations. And if yeah. you click on any one of those numbers, that should point to the full reference at the bottom. Um, so let's just do our bit. Oh, there it is. There's our full uh, reference there. So we're teaching you about in-text citations oh. and also where the full references are. Um, could you do a control F? Can you do a miracle search? Can we search for yeah, a miracle yeah, in the in the health yeah, uh, academic yeah, literature? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, this are is we gonna, web. We... We're not even in the databases yet, but we're, it looks like we're finding some stuff that's pretty. This is technically that, a, this one and, and PubMed. These are all really up, 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 up. up. I don't know if uh, librarian colleagues, can we can we nix miracle or is that part of our prompt where in the research essay, we would explain that it is therefore not. I mean, there's miracles where where people uh, have a, you know, lift a car up off the ground because of a fight or flight sort of mechanism in their brains and, and bodies. But I don't know if it's miracle. It's sticking yeah. with me. I'm... And miracles cure together implies that like again like what can it cure and it's like it does it always cure that thing and so i think um there's like a a false indication that like it's, it's like a false assumption that uh, anyway and we've only looked at one source but i mm -hmm. think i i agree with you jason i'm gonna say miracle or having that superlative word on anything is problematic we're going too far in one direction because yep. usually we need to be in the middle when we're talking about because even on this article there, I saw the words adverse and contraindications, and those are two neg implying something negative, toxicity. I want to know what that's about. So mm. it's a well, cure, even if that is a thing, adverse, contraindications, toxicity. Right. It's and students, let us know in the chat. Part of the research rally is you engage with us. So if you have any thoughts, concerns, questions, compliments, please drop them in the chat. Two notes, Nicole. One is going to be the toxicity. That is a negative word. That is not a good word. The other word is in there. Word. I saw at the top, Ross, I saw ricinus, which I think is the Latin for ricin toxin. And toxin is toxicity. Um, ricin uh, is bad. That's bad. Okay. okay. So you, yeah, you have to process it correctly, I think, or else you can get that rice. Yeah, I think that's what it's saying is the plant itself is toxic if you consume it, but somehow the oil is really safe. Um, we're saying there's minimal effects in pretty safe for human consumption. Now, the thing that caught my eye about this source is they're specifically looking at this as a laxative. Oh, so that's a very specific use. So, so and just flashing back, uh, if you remember the movie Stand By Me, uh, castor oil is used, uh, let's just say as a laxative, but uh, that was more of the... Uh the throw up kind, uh, I should just yeah. say, to keep it, keep it, I guess, somewhat clean, okay. I guess. Well, um, I'm wondering if it can be, if there's other uses for it, because like if it used as a laxative, like is that a well, cure for what? Like, <laughs> and what miracle? What? How? What's going on there? How is it? Now we're we're okay. A disclaimer, everybody that's watching on the live or replay, we're not medical doctors. We're we don't have medical expertise. We're searching information that does apply to medical needs and addressing medical situations. So as with anything we ever cover here. Like check with the doctor first if you're going to ingest something or use something for some kind of physical or mental or uh, a, uh, as a um, a therapy or a cure or you know we're not purporting hey go out and buy a bottle of organic castor oil check out in the description below my Amazon link right so, where I get money for it okay check with the doctor first is what I'm so, trying to say so what That's can we do. Minutes. What can we do now to that original prompt? And maybe you have the scroll. There it is. Is castor oil a miracle cure? I would suggest to my fellow colleague librarians, let's let's butcher that and rearrange it. Are we going to databases? Well, maybe. Oh, we I mean, but where? Rearrange it. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. where are we going? It's we've established it can't be a miracle. It's it's and then the cure for what is my concern? What are we? What's my ailment? Why did we come up on this? And so what can we put in there? It, can so we better, do a Google search for what better. is castor oil used for? What what yeah. ailment? 
instead of ale this yeah might be is even if we didn't know much yet which we don't and we still wanted to bring a different a better thesis maybe it would be is castor oil uh good for your health mm. right, hold on we That's have a suggestion here Audrey says, I would oh. approach this prompt by researching what castor oil is and what it's supposed to be used for with an exclamation point. Okay, drop mic, period, full stop. There you go, Bye. Audrey. There you go. That's how you research, Riley. <laughs> okay. So what is castor oil supposed to be used for? And now this is preliminary research students where you can use things like what is and like a Google search. But when you get into the databases, we're going to kind of chop those dead words off. We don't need the what is eventually when we get there. It's just going to be castor oil, ailment, cure. But I, I, you know, I'm not so sure about the cure there. Okay. So how do we get to the databases? Can you show us Ross Martin, library Ross Martin? Sure, we can go back and, and take a look at this. So this is where we are starting. This is just our library's homepage. Um, we can we can do a lot from this page, but yeah, if we're looking for a specific research tool, um, we can use these databases, which collect all this information and kind of organize it for us a little bit. Um, and where might we start with this? I mean, we are talking about health and, and that kind of thing. So maybe we could take a look at a subject category that's, that's something along like health sciences, maybe. Um, that seems like a reasonable starting point. Okay. And then we Best have a bets. lot What does that topic. mean? <laughs> <laughs> English lesson. What does best bets mean, Ross? Library, Ross Martin? Well, these are the, the databases we've kind of curated as being the most, uh, what's the right word for it? Um, easiest they're, to use kind of yeah they're usually the most approachable databases they're going to work for a, a, a large variety of topics that kind of stuff there yeah medline in this area of health uh Sinal is good too uh, but i i would mm -hmm. maybe do a medline hey where we were you know nicole had said that that was on the web that that is really good the ncbi and it's a dot gov uh, and that actually trips into pubmed which i i would argue would probably be on this list under the p's when we get to it pubmed is another good one do we do we get to it yeah, okay, okay. so okay. and it, these are just some of the different ones that you'd want to go to but let's select one to nicole's point and let's jump in and see what we can find Let's try Medline. I mean, Sinol is good for like nursing and uh, the applied health kind of stuff. But Medline, if we want to see like the scientific literature about this, uh, I think that's going to be our, our, our starting point. Again, going into the databases, because we're going to, even though we can find some articles about scientific studies on just online or on Google Scholar, our library databases, the library, any library database is going to have more access to more articles from more different journals on more scientific studies that have hard data about whatever it may be. So look at the second one to the bottom, just as a, so what we're looking at is kind of what I call co-pilots, right? Some databases give you co-pilots, but the fact that it was already in there and Ross, tell me if I'm wrong, this is, these searches have already been aggregated by the database and that's why they keep popping up or you're not in your head. So uh, now we have an arthritis. Remember before I kept saying a cure for what? Maybe we're in the skin and arthritis in the skin. There's something with a something. At least now we're getting a little bit closer and you could see students, this is part of the research process. Sometimes it's a snail's pace. Sometimes it's a rocket ship on fire. Write that one down, Nicole. It's a good one. Write that down. <laughs> uh, we could also call it research is strategic exploration if we want to is. really uh, there it is. about that language. Yeah, flake hab. <laughs> okay. All right, so, let's click on one. What do we got? What are we doing? I mean, arthritis? Pick, yeah, because if I was like a miracle cure, like maybe it's a miracle cure for arthritis. Let's see what happens. Just, when choose wait, it. we're getting away from miracle cure. But All right, right, nine hundred and twelve. Um, it's trying to help me out, but it actually didn't find anything. But yeah. there's a reason for that. Uh huh. <laughs> it's because we didn't we didn't write our search out in the proper format that the database likes. We, we kind of talk to it like we talk to Google. But yeah. yeah. Someone else oh. typed that into the database, right? Yeah, let's chop that off. Weird. Chop it all off. If there's anything about castor oil in this. Yeah. We could add maybe treatment, but I think this is probably enough. So this and is a Boolean search we're using, folks. So we're using and, so we're building kind of a train. So we want castor oil Ooh, and great. arthritis. And that chopped it down from 900 and whatever down to four. So that's a Ooh. little more palatable. I do see ricin on the top one. I do see in vitro. I do see... Yeesh. And the ricinous, uh, the way that that's said, that's more of the Latin, the, the, but it's ricin. 
uh, chemistry, alkaloids, uses. So it'd be it'd be ethno, uh, medicinal. So I think that's out external uses mm -hmm. and pharmacological activities. I don't see cure. I don't see that's miracle. That's a review. That's a review of what, like another article or a of the literature, book, probably. Okay. Um, but you know what? I don't see anything that explicitly mentions Arthur right is here everything is about okay. information um, now i don't know that i spelled arthritis correctly um, maybe i did i think it's just like my middle name it's a-r-t-h-u-r i'm just kidding <laughs> and then uh so, okay, so we literally maybe, have four results that's like then maybe go back into google and simply type in to to audrey's point what is castor oil what is it used for Supposed what is castor oil use used for we put in health benefits on webmd what'd that come up with thick mostly odorless. look g top google thing what is it mostly used yeah, for Okay. And WebMD has its issues, but over the years, WebMD has gotten a lot better at solving some of those problems. Like you can see right here, like somebody is reviewing this information. An MD doctor is reviewing this information. So I'm starting to trust okay. that a little bit more. And it's been uh, written by a WebMD uh, contributor. Is that the same person? Editorial contributor was reviewed. So they reviewed it and they wrote it. Great. We have a year. Uh, it was within the past year. Good. It's up to speed. And so uh, India, I saw Egypt before. Calories isn't edible oil. Yeah, Nutritional yeah. facts. They've been using it for thousands of years. Yep. Then... For oh, what though? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. What is that? What was that? What was that? Okay. Castor oil. For a constipation, okay. we saw that okay. earlier. We saw that earlier. Okay, miracle cure for what? Induce labor. Miracle okay. cure. Ninety-three percent of housewives. Stuff that yes. kind of ties in with the animals. Heal the wounds. Is. There we go. Heal wounds. Balsam oil, pressure wounds. Miter cut scrapes. Mm -hmm. Hospitals recommend a doctor's office. You see how we read these articles, uh, students. Right. <laughs> okay, so we're rich and fatty we're... acids. Here's a fact: rich in fatty acids. Okay. So we got a fact about it that's going to tell us why it might be good for some reason miracle Which cure still not seeing it still not there no, i haven't seen miracle no okay acne, belly, blah, blah, blah. Okay. belly button i've heard of that you've heard of putting <laughs> castor oil in your belly button nicole not full, dis full disclosure i i i use castor oil and i i don't ingest it i do put it on my skin so there I you have go. anecdata about castor oil. And there that's why I picked this topic for today's show. Ah, understood. Well, you know, I'm interested. It's like, what am I interested in? But, you know, we're going through the process. But I haven't even done this much research about it, full disclosure. So this sure. is great. <laughs> but there, Ross has parked at I've a pretty good stop yet. here. You could see it's it's for the, you got the scalp, the hair, the skin there we've is. already seen. And, you know, arthritis was came up on the other thing. But still, maybe it's used for that area where you have the arthritis. Because I think, you know, it's kind of outside. So, oh. Do we have any conclusions maybe on the bottom of like there's no look right there it said but there's no research this doctor Ooh. author is signing off on there is no research evidence to back up this up that it has moisturizing it. so th skin. that's for fighting acne that's for pimples and blemishes mm -hmm. and antibacterial and okay okay so, you know, at this point, students, you're, you may be like stuck. You maybe go, well, I'm listening to librarians. I'm on the database. I'm on Google. I, there's a medically reviewed uh, website. What is there? But our original thesis, our prompt was, is it a medical cure? Is it a cure for a medicinal cure, miracle cure, castor oil? And then I think we could take, if, if, we, if we were turning this paper in in five minutes from now, we'd be able to say from the research that we have just did, uh, one could speculate or, or even conclude, no. I found no evidence in my in my research, and then I probably cite these sources really quick. Again, if that's if you're doing like a five minute research <laughs> assignment, five minute research paper. Hey, yeah. can we go back into the database because we still haven't even opened up one article that even mentions castor oil from the database. I do skin. Okay, skin. so we're inflammation. inflammation I, we've 21. seen that a few times. Let's try skin. I, I kind of like that. Like I like the skin care. Okay. Oh, I went up seven twenty eight. Okay. But yeah, like I mean, uh, treating, yeah. I don't know what that is, but I can do less look like skin cream. Okay, topical so that's, delivery. Yeah, and that's more of the cream use and not uh, the liquid form. Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I'm going to get vertigo from looking at your uh, screen share. Pigmentation. Pigmentation. Again, miracle cure. Uh, students, uh, let us know in the chat. Are Ooh. we leaning that way? I, do, I just... Did we actually, by the way, did we plug that into a Google search? Is castor oil a miracle cure? Did we actually plug uh, no, in the... No, we didn't actually ask oh. that. Oh. 
So I, I think... saw on YouTube uh, social media some people claiming that though. Oh yeah. Well, don't that's, yeah. That's uh, how I came up with the phrase. But no, well, let's talk about this because like, hey, you might come across a video, and honestly, with the ones I've seen. Is like someone being like, oh, I've been using castor oil for 30 days straight and I think it's a miracle. Okay. And then they're telling me their anecdata. We've talked about this before. A personal experience is, doesn't come from a scientific study where multiple people, many, many people were studied. So we have data that like, okay, we can show above and beyond this happens all the time or whatever to everybody in the study or most people in the study. Anecdata. It happened to me. It happened to one person. Yes, I put castor oil on my face every night. You know what? I think my skin feels better. I think my BB hairs are growing back in, okay? I think my lashes are getting thicker and lusher. But like, that wasn't part of a scientific study. That's my anecdata. So again, if you're going to the internet and you're searching, is castor, is castor oil a miracle cure? Or what is castor oil supposed to be used for? Hey, if you end up on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, you know, just sift your source. What is their authority? Are they just telling you their own personal experience and take that for what it is? Doesn't mean they're wrong. I mean, I promise you my lashes are thicker and lusher. I swear I, it. <laughs> I, I think to your point, if, if it's working, I think it does have a multitude of, of uses. However, I just, I take umbrage with the oh, word miracle, yeah. you know, I mean, can, the, can you do a quantitative study of like how thick people how much thicker people's lashes get from putting castor oil on them i mean maybe you can but like i don't think it's in this database you okay. know many of the things i'm I, while we're talking i'm researching over here i know ross is still researching a lot of the same uh verbiage that i'm seeing is uh, to paraphrase is that there's no exact scientific proof to back up any of these claims so you could go door to door we could go back in the uh, 1800s and get a wagon to the three of us and sell quote castor oil as a miracle cure and i'm sure it actually does do what it does i'm sure it helps your skin i'm sure it helps your eyelashes and belly button and maybe it helps with the constipation as as we mentioned in different ways but maybe back in the day that would have been a miracle have you ever heard of snake oil salesman do you know what a snake oil is um look go click on that one right there ross the efficacy okay hyperpigmentation so something to do with like skin color or skin mm -hmm. patches of color pigmenting okay pigment color um and this was like done on like a rat or something um i don't mice. i don't know that it was okay. i think it's studying uh like in a single arm clinical trial they probably tested it on go down to the abstract which is also our summary here that's what i'm looking at here okay see what they what they found and what it means um it it castor seemed in this study that castor oil cream seemed to be helpful for hyperpigmentation infraorbital yeah. hyperpigmentation what is that I don't know what that means. Okay. Oh, well, if it's some uh, pigment, it's got to be a skin something. It's a vegetable oil, yeah. castor beans, colorless pale liquid, castor oil yeah, for soaps, mean. lubricants, break fluid. Oh, 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 according to Wikipedia, it's also used for break fluids <laughs> and paints. Are you serious? And dyes and coatings and inks and waxes and plastics and polishes and nylons and perfumes. And you're putting that all on the stuff? I don't know. Let's take a step back, Nicole. Some people are eating it. Some people are oh. eating it. It's still a natural product from a seed. But in this research, the, the castor oil significantly reduced the melanin level, wrinkles, and skin laxity, I think is how you there say you it. There you go. So it did seem to mm. improve skin care in this this study infraorbital pigmentation is a common cosmetic and dermatologic concern characterized by the appearance of darkening of skin as well as a brownish discoloration of the skin i'm guessing like in contrast to the rest of the color of the skin so a uneven pigmentation oh I, you know, we're going back and forth, guys, with a lot of these databases and stuff. And I landed on Wikipedia, and I just want to say some children, uh, since children commonly dislike, strongly dislike the taste of castor oil, some parents punish their children with the doses of it. <laughs> so this, of course, this is in different countries, and you could take a look at it. A heavy dose of castor oil could be as humiliating punishment for adults. So you may want to look a little more into some of this stuff. Mm. Coatings precursor to industrial chemicals and so on and so forth so it does have a lot of uh, in world war one the aviation they used this on rotary engines that was the primary lubricant and so somebody's putting that on their eyelashes that was used to lubricate engines 
rotary engines in a war and you're so putting that on your face no but we yeah, got in addition to other of course well and you know what actually was used as a lubricant um was um on uh like industrial parts was um crisco crisco was invented for that but that has mm. other ingredients castor oil if you buy organic castor oil it's literally just from the seed i mean i don't i'm not saying like I'm ross can you mm. ross can you go to something called the and i'll drop it in the chat did you folks know did you know that there is an international castor oil <laughs> association and they have an faq oh you didn't know they might that have a bias. they might Before have a bias the, they might they might definitely, have one definitely sift out that bias yeah, let's look at out, it investigate find more like it yeah that's the icoa yeah that's it the icoa yep 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 and what do so we can, want to know about that? i don't know but what's the faq maybe the health where does it come from are they seeds or beans see maybe we could have started back to audrey's point earlier ago maybe we could have landed on this if we would have thought that there's actually an organization um but you can see just, and we're at 27 minutes here in the show, Graham. Yeah. Uh, this is how the research goes. We have not typed a word in our hypothetical scenario here. We have not typed anything for our assignment, a discussion post, wherever we needed this. Um, and this is where the research goes. It spins and it turns. And it, but this is the research as inquiry, right, Nicole, for your frames. Nicole Absolutely. goes over the different frames. We are we are curious. We're learning about these other Absolutely. things. Learning um, new things as we go along. That's yeah. normal. Correct. I think the biggest takeaway from this is that you got to stay away from the ricin. You got to get rid of the ricin somehow. I don't know if that's the heated up part. I don't know if you heat it and the ricin goes away. Ricin is notoriously akin to like an anthrax. People sometimes use it as as weapons. It, it can be used as a as a very dangerous 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 uh, <laughs> weapon that could be used in like a biohazard. Like it's it's a very uh, you know although biohazard and anthrax are two really really good different. bands. Yeah, different bands. Um, I don't oh, think yeah yeah i, I don't think like, right why are you closing out the show with that i'm like oh okay band names what's their band i don't names? think ricin's a band name but you know anthrax and biohazard are both two different uh okay. hardcore heavy metal bands so we figured out today at least in this half hour that castor oil is not a miracle cure i think we can say that with some certainty and we could probably even surmise maybe there is no miracle cure at all but anyway we know that castor oil is not a miracle cure we didn't find any evidence for that and we found out what it is and some of the things that it could be used for but if we wanted to say hey yeah um i want to use it for intraorbital hyperpigmentation we only looked at one database article about it so i would say like if i wanted to argue that this is one of the best uses for castor oil i'd want to find more studies on it i'd want to mm -hmm. find more articles in our library databases about that if That's you went to war good. and you wanted to lubricate some uh high power jet engines or something you have the castor oil but also <laughs> honestly from a librarian academic standpoint we also looked at a a, a, a bounty of, of different sources a bountiful collection mm -hmm. right we went to the the actual source which was this ioka icoa we did not know that existed we checked wikipedia for a little bit but we also checked google and then we also checked the, the dot gov and the ncbi uh and a couple of different databases as well uh, pubmed or uh, medline whichever yeah, one we checked so and that was only in a half hour friends so when mm -hmm. you're looking at your assignments and you have a big uh-oh how do i do this and what do i do maybe ask a research librarian but this is how we do the research we have to look and evaluate these sources and really get to the bottom of it and it took some spins and went some different ways and you also saw too paying attention we changed our research Research topic a little bit after we realized it wasn't a miracle so you can use our chat Very service to get a hold of us but yeah you kind of use it and kind of go with the flow yeah. um yeah remember we are librarians at seminole state college we can help you with your research needs also citations well, there's no question too big no question too small no question too weird we want to hear it all we are here to help you you can get in touch with us with chat our chat service it's 24 7 we can make an appointment with us. You can walk into one of the three Seminole State Library branches that have staff that are staffed and talk to a librarian and get research help when we're open. So please do that. We're here for you, man. That's what we're here for. So we yep, do. Everybody. In the chat, we have the link there. All you need to do is hit it once. Go ahead and hit that oh, chat once yep. and you should you be uh, hit the link it. once. Let's see. We have Audrey. Audrey, you're good on there. And then who else did we have before? We were, somebody else is up top. Where'd you go? Oh, Sergio. We got Sergio. Okay. Sergio, just That's go ahead and click that link once. And anybody else watching, go ahead and click it again. And thank you all for watching. This has been uh, Ross, Nicole, and Jason, Seminole State College Library Research Rally Live. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hello. What is Research Rally? Learn what's
librarians. Get campus info. Connect with your Seminole State family. Every Wednesday at 4 p.m. at Seminole State Lab on YouTube. 